Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be doing the last problem of the bi-weekly contest 124, maximize consecutive elements in an array after modification. And in the problem, you're given a zero indexed ray nums consisting of positive integers. Initially, you can increase the value of any element in the array by at most one. After that, you need to select one or more elements from the final array such that the elements are consecutive when sorted in increasing order. For example, 345 is, 346 is not, 1123 is not. Return the maximum number of elements that you can select. So in this first example, they show you, you can basically take one of the ones, turn it into a three, and then you will have one, two, three. In the second one, no matter what you do, you'll only have one. So this one took me kind of a while and I did realize some things. So there's a couple of um, assumptions that you can kind of figure out um, that help a little bit with the intuition is problem. For one thing, if you have any more than two of a number, it doesn't really help you. So if I have one, 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 two, five, because this one can only be a one or a two, and I can only, because I have to make an increasing sequence, meaning I can only use each different number once, I can only make two numbers out of this. So even if I had like a million ones, the only thing that would matter is do I have one or two? Right, because if I have two, I can do this. If I have one, I can either do a two or a one. So that's one thing. Another thing is, so it, basically like here, in this case, if, if your chain, if your consecutive sequence starts with some duplicate number, then you can always do something like this. Because if a number, um, if a number is past this, that's like a two over here, now I can increase this to be a three and now I have a longer sequence, or if I even don't want to increase it, I can just delete it and then I'll still have two numbers like I had before, right? One, two. So, but sometimes you're not gonna be able to change this. Like let's say you have two, three, three, five, and you decide I want to change my two into a three. Well, now when you get to these numbers, you have to change um, at least one of them or something, right? Cause you can't have like the same sequence. So you'd have to change this into like a four. And then this number would be totally useless because all you could do with a three is either keep a three or or have a four, so that um, you would get rid of it. But essentially, what I realized is I tried to do something like that, and then I also tried a like a greedy kind of thing where I would just say like, okay, well, let's say I have some numbers like one, one, two, five. If I don't have any, if I don't have any numbers before my numbers, I will always take my two numbers and just make it into the one and the one after it. And then I'll keep going. And if I have, if I already have this number, I'll just get rid of it or I'll increase it. So like, let's say here, um, because I have one, two, I, if I have a two here, I want to have all non-repeating numbers. So I'll just take this two and turn it into a three. And then basically what I ended up doing was I get like an increasing sequence. And then I would just check like, what's the longest increasing sequence in my, um, like what's the longest subarray here that's increasing, which is pretty straightforward. But there's kind of a problem with this approach. And let's take a look at this, what would happen here. If we just say like every time we have a duplicate, let's just take the number and the number after it. And every time we have the normal number, we'll just keep it as is. So what would happen here is we'd make like two, three, six, eight, nine, ten, And then here we have a duplicate. So we'll turn this 10 into an 11. And now this 11, we're gonna wanna increase because we already have an 11. So we'll have like 12, 13. Um, and now this 12 is useless, so we'll just ignore it. We can't do anything here. And then with this 13, we'll turn into a 14. And then the longest increasing sequence here is this. But actually the answer is we wanted to turn the six into a seven. So just because you have a number, doesn't mean you can like leave it as is for sure. Like just because it, it, it can be there, doesn't mean you wanna leave it. You might actually still wanna increase it. So that made it kind of complicated. And I did realize like, kind of how to do a DP memorization solution. Like I, I got kind of what I needed to do, but it was a lot, a lot harder to do than um, just doing it bottom up. And so the bottom up idea is gonna be kind of like longest increasing subsequence where we're just gonna check for every number. Do we have a the number before that? And if we do have the number before that, then we can just add this number to the end of it. So like for two, we'll just say like, do we have something that ends with a one? If we do, whatever that length is, we can just add a two. So that length will just be increased by one. Now also we can take this two and turn it into a three. So we can also just check, is there anything that ends with two? And if there is, then we'll take that and increase by one. And the main thing you have to do, because we have two things that we can do for every number, right? We can either keep it the same 
or increase it. And the order here matters if you do DP because if you only have one, two, you wanna check this one first because that way you're gonna check like, okay, if I increase it, it'll be a three. Do I have anything that ends with two? No, I don't. But if I keep it the same and then I check, like, right, like if I check, do I have anything that ends with one? No, I don't. But now this DP of the sequence that ends with two will be one. And then when I check this increase version, then I don't really know, like, I'll, I'll check DP of three, right? And I'll say like, does DP of two exist? Yes, it does. So then this should be two, but it doesn't, but it can't be two because you don't, you don't have like, you don't have a two. Like we, we never actually have this two. We can't use the same. We can't use it. We can't make this a two and a three and use both of those together. That's why the order here matters. And what we can do to, to make this really easy is we are going to first check what happens if we increase it and then keep it the same. So we will swap these around. Whoops. So we will say, let's do this second. Let's do this first. And now if we hit the same number twice, this will work because so here, if we have the same number twice, we can make a sequence of like two, three, right? But if we have the two ones, we can't make a two, three because we only have one number. So now let's see what happens if we do it this way. So if we keep this number the same and we're going to do bottom up, because like I said, I think for like longest increasing, increasing subsequence and those types of problems, bottom up is like way, way easier than memorization. So here for this two, we're going to say, OK, let's see what happens if we increase it. So DP of three will be DP of two. There is no DP of two, right? This is our first value plus one. So this is just a one. Now let's see what happens if we keep it the same. If we keep it the same, then we have to check, is there a one anywhere? No, there isn't. So DP of two will be one. Now, when we go to this number, now it'll work perfectly. So we're going to say, okay, if we try to increase it, then it's going to be um, DP of three, right? And DP of three is just DP of two plus one, which we have. So now DP of three will be two and keep it the same will be dp of two is dp of one plus one dp of one's not there so this will stay the same and now if we have any more twos like for the first two this will be one and one for the second two it will be two and one and for any more twos like let's say we have another two here now this is these are always going to be the same right because dp of two will always be one and dp of one will always be zero so because increasing it is going to be based off of this and this is going to be based off of this, which never change. And that's the exact thing that we want. You could, like I said, you could um, get rid of all but two of every single number because all you need is two of them, right? So if this was like two, 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 it only like it only matters if you have one or two because all you could do with a two is keep it the same or increase by one. So that's kind of the idea here is we will do these two things. And then let's walk through this and show how it works basically. And yeah, basically once you realize that like for every number, that's all you can do. You, this is kind of the tricky part is like, how do I make sure that I know the difference between, you know, if I have an array that ends with two, that's not this number. And that's just by doing it this way first. So let's walk through how this would work. And also at every single iteration, or actually not at every single iteration, at the very end, we will just have the DP of, of um, a sequence ending with every single value. And then we just get the get the max of that. Kind of the same thing as like longest increasing subsequence, right? Where you get every subsequence that ends with every number, and then you just get like the longest one. So let's walk through how this would work. And then we'll talk about an optimization that's like pretty straightforward. So here we're going to say, Okay, we don't have like, and, and and we can use a dictionary for DP just because these these like sums can be um whatever, or I guess these totals can be like whatever. So it's when you have totals, it's easier to do, or I guess not totals, but when you have values, like right, these values won't be corresponding to an index or anything. You'll have a lot of blanks. You can probably use an array, but I'll just use a dictionary. So for DP of two, we're gonna try increasing. So that will give us a three, and we're gonna check. Okay, do we have and do we have anything in our dictionary that ends with two? Right here's our dictionary. Do we have anything that ends with two? No, we don't. So then our default length will just be an a sequence of length one, or just this number three. So three, one. Now we're gonna keep it the same. So for two, 
we, do we have anything that ends with a one that we can add the two to the end? Um, no, we don't. So two will also be one. Then we move this over. We tried to increase this three to a four. So if this is a four, then do we have anything that ends with three? Yes, we do right over here. So we're going to take that and add one. So we're going to have four, two and keep it the same. So if this is a three, then do we have anything that went two? Yes, we do. So three will be two, right? Because you can have two, three. Okay. For the six, go to the next thing. We're going to say, okay, let's try to increase it. Do we have anything? If we try to make it a seven, do we have anything that ends with a six? No, we don't. So seven would just be length one. And if we keep it the same, we don't have anything that ends with five either. So five will also be length one. And then we keep going. For eight, we're going to check. If we try to make it a nine, we're going to check. Do we have anything that ends with a um, seven or an eight? No, we don't. So we'll have nine, one. And do we, if we keep it the same, if we have it an eight, do we have anything that ends with seven? Yes, we do. Length one. So eight will be two. Then for nine, if we try to make it a 10, we're going to say, do we have anything that ends with a nine? Yes, we do. So for a 10, it would be the thing that ends with a nine plus one, so two. And if we keep it the same, then we're, if we have a nine, then do we have anything that ends with eight? Yes, we do. Um, right over here. So nine will now be um, three. And we, we can just update the value, right? So this will be three. It will always be like bigger, like you're always guaranteed to get bigger values or or something um, or the same. So here we're going to update this nine to be three. And we're going to go over here. So for this 10, we're going to try to increase it. So 11. Um, so if we make it 11, then do we have anything that ends with 10? Yes, we do. So 11 will be three. Do we, if we keep it the same, do we have anything that ends with nine? Yes, we do. So 10 will now be updated to be four. Maybe I missed one of these values, but that's kind of the idea of it. So you just keep doing this. You keep doing this. You keep doing this. So let's um, maybe move this so we can kind of like speed it up a bit. Oops, don't need that. Okay, let's move uh, this over. Delete that. Move this down here so we can speed it up a bit. Kind of messy. That's okay. Okay. So um, yeah. So for the ten, we kind of did that, right? We have an eleven that had that. And notice how we like if we did it the other way. So if we did it the other way, then we'd get an incorrect value. Like if we if we try to keep it the same, then we would reuse this 10. And that would be a problem. So yeah, so let's go over here. So for this 10, um, do we have if we try to increase it, then we'd we'd have a 10. And we do have a 10. So this 11 will now be five. And if we keep it the same, then for nine, we have three. So this 10 will be four. So that'll be the same. So that makes sense, right? Like for this 10, we can use this previous 10. So we could say like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay. Now for this 11, we try to increase it. So it would go to 12. So do we have any 11s? Yes, we do. So 12, we'd have six. Um, yeah, I think this is like the closing bracket that we don't really need anymore. I'm definitely kind of messy, but it's okay. So, and then if we keep it the same, then um, where we see how many tens we have, we have 10, um, where we have four tens. So this 11 will be five, which is the value we already have. Then for 12, if we increase it, then we look for how many 12s we have. We have six, so 13, we'll have seven. And if we keep it the same, then we'll have um, this, this many 11s, and so we'll have six 12s. Then for this 12, if we increase it um, to 13, we check how many 12s do we have. We have six, so 13 would be the same, and 12s would be the same as well. So finally, for 13, if we increase it, how many 13s do we have? We have seven, so 14 has eight, and if we keep it the same, then 13 will have seven, which is the same value we have. Then 14 has the longest sequence, so let's take a look at what the sequence would be. So it would basically be take this six, change it into a seven, then eight, nine, 10, make this um, an 11, make this, a, I think there's like a few ways to do this, but essentially make this a 12, make this a 13, ignore this completely and make this a 14. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight values. 
you could do this in a few more ways, but that's kind of the idea. Basically, you try to increase the value and then you try to add it to the end of a sequence that starts with the one before it and then you keep it the same. And like I said, the reason we want to increase is so if we do have one, two, if we had it the other way, then if we made it a three, we check how many twos do we have, but we actually don't have any twos yet because we're trying to increase this value. But if we have a two after that, then we can use a previous two values. That's kind of the idea. Now, an optimization is, so if you think about it, if we're on like some number, we basically need three values, right? We need the count of number minus one, right? Like let's say we're on um, like an eight. If we keep it the same, then we need to know how many sevens we have. Then we also need the count of like this number at the end, right? So we need count of number, well, like to store it. Like when we keep keep the number the same, we need to figure out like what, what like oh, like what's the longest sequence you can make with this number. So so it really wouldn't be the count of this number minus one. It'd be like longest sequence, the so longest sequence of number minus one, longest sequence of number. And finally, if we increase it, we also have the longest sequence of number plus one. So these are essentially all the things we need for every single number, right? And we do need to store this again because we might run into the same number multiple times. Like let's say we have like two, 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 two. For this two, we do need to know this to calculate it and so on, right? So just because we have it here, like we're gonna have to just pass this down. So because we only actually need three values, we only need the number smaller we need the equal number and we need the number bigger. Instead of storing this whole array, we can actually just store those three numbers. So this is kind of like, you know, like uh, space optimized bottom up DP or where you, you kind of have things like house robber where you have a few values that you need to store. And then for every single, like if let's say we're here, all we need to know is what's the count of sevens, what's the count of eights, what's the count of nines. And then the biggest one of those will always be our answer. So essentially what we can do is we can we can keep this in place and then every time we calculate these three values we'll just say like the result is equal to the biggest one of these. So a little bit confusing but I can show you the code. Um, so essentially I have a dp that will have three values. It will be a default dict you sort it. And for every number we create a new dp. And like I said this is going to be um increase the number. This is going to be keep it the same. And then this, this is just going to track the old count. And this is because, um, like I said, you can run into the same number multiple times. So if your array is like one, two, 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 two um, five, for every single value of two, you still need how many ones do you have? So that's why you need to like pass this down. But essentially for every single iteration, you only need to keep three values. What's the longest, like, what's the longest subsequence I can make with this number minus one, what's the longest subsequence I can make using this number, and what's the longest subsequence I can make with this number plus one. Technically, I guess you it'll, it'll never be like this, like this is never gonna be um, needed, but you do need to pass it down. So this, this is just easier to do this way. Technically, you can just say result is equal to the previous result and one of these two, and that would be fine. So essentially you calculate these two values. If you, if you don't want a dictionary, you don't have to use a dictionary, calculate these two values and just say result is the maximum of the old result or one of these two values. We're basically just calculating subsequences as we go. And um, it, it's not necessarily that the longest, like that one of these values at the end will be the best subsequence. Because let's say here um, we had, for example, uh, like 19. Like this 19 would only be a subsequence of one. So our actual result would have been when we went through this number here. So that's why you need to do this at every single iteration. But yeah, definitely took me a long time to figure this out. Um, Cause I was trying to do this in the minimalization and it was a lot, a lot harder. But with bottom up, it's pretty, it's like a lot easier to just figure out, okay, how do I make sure I don't count the same number twice when I'm increasing by, by doing this? And the rest of it is pretty straightforward. You can only do a few things. You can only keep the number the same or increase it. And then it's just basically uh, boils down to a longest common subsequence problem. And so we can run this and see it's pretty good. Um, yeah. And so time-wise, you might be able to do this in O of N as well with like some other stuff, but 
I, I already spent enough time on this realm, to be honest. Like, this code looks pretty easy, but the code I had before was just, like, a supreme mess. So, yeah, definitely. Um, the biggest thing to recognize is you want to do this in bottom-up. That it saves you a lot and, and like, the, the thing you're looking for. So this is going to be O of n log n and space is O of 1 because we just have a dictionary with three items now instead of, like, having this old DP with a bunch of items, right? So we, we cut it down from O of n to um, O of, of 1. And yeah, I think this is another contest that's pretty doable. This problem did seem kind of easy, but then a lot of the things I tried ran into edge cases. So I think it's definitely doable, definitely harder than it looks. Um, but once you kind of get the idea, like once you really get the idea, once you understand like, okay, I need to do this bottom up, here's the, here's the states I have, it's really easy. It's just kind of hard to get there. So yeah, um, I guess we can look at, I wonder if we can see, all right, I guess I won't spend time doing that. I was going to look into like the, the contest uh, percentage for it. I guess, oh, here we go. Yeah, it's 21%. So even though it looks kind of easy, the acceptance is kind of low. I know the acceptance for um like seven point problems is like, like a lot of these super hard ones, like five to 10%. So this is still pretty low. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this one. So if you did like this one, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll probably post some videos for uh, the one at the end of the day uh, later on. So see you in the next one.